The bond market collapses. The dollar loses its value as well. Presumably the stock market tumbles too. So where should investors put their money? Uh, well, one essential thing that everybody should have in their portfolio is, is an investment in gold. Uh, with the breakdown in bond markets, world ma uh, major fiat currency system, uh, gold, real money, is a wise, the wise choice uh, requirement, uh, in my opinion, for, for everybody's portfolio. I think gold prices, you know, a lot of people say it's, they're high right now at, at $1,250 an ounce, but, you know, just to match their inflation adjusted high, uh, uh, the gold made in 1980, gold has to rise to $2,300 an ounce. That's almost double of what its current price is, and I believe it can go much higher to as high as $5,000 an ounce. You also have to think about how tiny the supply of gold really is, especially when it takes on its attribute of being real money. You know, there's only about a trillion dollars invested in gold uh, in the entire world, whereas there's $40 trillion in, in stock markets and even more in bond markets. So, you know, any kind of stampede uh, out of currencies and bond markets can send gold through the roof. Specifically, how would you advise people to invest in gold? Well, I believe every investor should have a little bit of gold bullion, not much. Uh, you don't have to load up on physical gold. It's inconvenient. You can buy some gold bullion coins. But I prefer uh, a lot of uh, the gold allocation be towards uh, gold exchange traded funds, specifically GLD, which is the SBDR Gold Trust ETF. It's the largest gold ETF uh, in the world, the most liquid. There are many other uh, gold ETFs, but GLD uh, is the best due to its liquidity and it, and it holds the most gold, uh, some 38 million ounces by, by last reckoning. Larry, what if I want to invest in individual stocks? Do you have any names on that front? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I would own at least two, if not more, uh, blue chip miners. Uh, companies like Newmont Mining, symbol NEM, uh, one of the biggest gold miners in the world, has more than 90 million ounces of, of proven gold that it does not hedge. So uh, as gold goes higher, it can earn the maximum profits from it. Uh, and you, you should take a look uh, at the chart I brought along today of Newmont Mining. Uh, the stock price, uh, Newmont's share price is up 129%. Uh, since uh, late 2008, the no November of 2008, since the, uh, the, the real estate crisis really got cranking and, and it turned into a sovereign debt crisis. Okay, Larry Edelson, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Jamie. So now you've heard about all the different ways to invest if bond prices fall and interest rates rise, but that's far from a given. In fact, institutional investors have made no preparations for a collapse in the Treasury market. Monty Agrawal has 15 years of experience at Wall Street banks and hedge funds and has actively managed capital for more than a decade without ever suffering a down year. Monty, you watch institutional money flows, including hedge funds and sovereign wealth funds. Why aren't they preparing for a downturn in the bond market? Well, they're seeing a lot of the same things that you've been talking about here today, Jamie. A sovereign debt crisis that has moved from Dubai to Europe. And they've seen countries react to that crisis in a way that hasn't been able to solve the problem, with basically which is increased deficit spending. But the U.S. is doing the same thing. Uh, yes, but the U.S. monetary system is different than Europe's. The Federal Reserve can print as much money as it wants, but the individual countries in Europe cannot print their way out of trouble. What happens is the weaker EU countries like Greece, for example, rely on the stronger ones like Germany and France to bail them out. But all that does is it just shifts the problem around. It doesn't solve it. In the U.S., it's a different story. So in other words, you don't foresee a collapse of the U.S. bond market, but what's your outlook for interest rates? Well, for one, I definitely see the volatility in the near term continuing in the markets uh, with 40 to 50 basis point moves in the bond market in both directions. Uh, there is a potential for interest rates to rise, but for different reasons. For example, if the global economic situation remains uncertain, then what might happen is some of the biggest holders of U.S. debt, such as the Chinese Sovereign Wealth Fund or the Middle Eastern Sovereign Wealth Funds, they may sell dollars to buy hard assets, such as natural resources. Monty, as we just heard, Larry Edelson thinks that that's the prudent play right now, especially when it comes to gold. Yes, gold and uh, oil, uh, other metals and commodities. The dollars that lenders like the Chinese Central Bank have are never held in cash, but in U.S. Treasury bonds. 
So what might happen is that if they want to shift their investment strategy, they might begin to liquidate the treasury positions. And interest rates, as a result, will start to rise. But you say institutional investors aren't too concerned about that. Uh, no, not in the near term, they're not. Uh, take Bill Gross, for example. He runs, the, he runs PIMCO, which is the largest bond fund in the world, at over $8 trillion. He and many other institutional investors like hedge funds actually think that the market could go the other way. In fact, they're projecting that the 10-year yield could go below 3%. So why are he and other institutional investors so bullish on the bond market when there is such a risk to the economy? Uh, it's precisely because the economy is so tenuous. There's no short-term inflation. The big investors are looking at the U.S. monetary policy, and they see that the Federal Reserve has no choice but to keep interest rates extremely low for the foreseeable future. So if the short-term interest rates that the Fed controls are not going to rise, that puts an artificial cap on how high the long-term interest rates can go. Because what happens is, any time the curve between short-term and long-term rates, whenever it gets too steep, the investors will come in and buy the long end, which will bring down the long-term interest rates. So at least in the short term, then, you think that the U.S. bond market is still safe? Yes, in the short term. And that's really all that the institutional investors are concerned with, the economic picture over the next three to six months. And I would say that for at least the next six months, the economic crisis in the U.S. will still exist. We won't have real sustainable growth, so the Fed won't be able to raise interest rates. Longer term, though, we may see that the sovereign debt crisis migrate to the U.S. But for now, the dollar and the U.S. bond markets are still considered safe havens. Monty Agarwal, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jamie. So, is the U.S. bond market safe? Institutional investors seem to think that as long as the country is struggling to recover from the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression, interest rates must remain low. But the sovereign debt crisis continues to rage across the Atlantic, and many of the same problems that Europe faces also afflict the U.S. Deficit spending, exploding treasury supply, and too much debt risk. In the short term, the bond market and the dollar appear safe, but there is no way to know when that will no longer be the case. We can't count on the rating agencies to tell us. So, you have to protect yourself now. I hope we've given you the information to do just that. Next week, we'll take a closer look at natural resources. How will the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico affect the U.S. economy and the energy markets? And can we continue to rely on oil to supply our energy needs in the future? I'm Jamie Holmes. Thank you so much for joining us on Money and Markets. And now, Martin Weiss. Earlier, I made two forecasts. I said that serious doubts about the leading rating agencies will spread. And I said that investors will scramble to independently reassess the true risk in nearly every rated bond and stock in the world. Those forecasts, however, take little foresight for the simple reason that they're already happening. But my next forecast does require a peek further into the future. The day will come when the leading rating agencies will have no choice but to cave in. Moody's, S&P, and Fitch will announce downgrades for hundreds of major debt issues in one fell swoop. Or they'll seek to wipe the slate clean by revamping their rating scales, effectively downgrading nearly all of the bonds they rate. I have no doubt this will happen. The only major uncertainty is when. Will it happen before millions of investors make up their own minds about what every rating should be? Or will it happen after the fact, when there's such a state of confusion and panic that the rating agencies are forced to act to restore their own credibility? In preparation for either scenario, it's clearly time for you to batten down the hatches and reduce dramatically your exposure to market declines. Until next week, this is Martin Weiss, president of Weiss Ratings.